because people have a varying <coughs> knowledge and understanding of how they work and how to use them. Um, you know, I mean, you, you can go from basic stuff like I use my Twitter account primarily to make my friends swallow their iPhones when I post pictures of stuff that I bake. Um, I use Facebook primarily. Oh, it, is. it is, absolutely. Um, I use Facebook more to keep in touch with my family because when I put pictures up on there, it's stuff of what I'm doing or I'm responding to my family's stuff. Um, there, there, there are more uses for it, but that's primarily what I use it for. And there is a differentiation. Like Twitter is more for hanging out with my friends and doing fun stuff with my friends. Facebook is more for, oh, my Aunt Susie wants to follow me. Okay. Hi, Aunt Susie. How's it going? You know, type of thing. Um, it depends on what you're doing, what you're looking to do with it, as to, as to where, you, where you go with it. And I think, since it's now technically 158, we're going to roll into the 201 session, if you'd like to stick around for the 201. What are you doing in 201? Pretty much continuing conversation. Okay, well, I, I started. Oh, that's cool. Thank you. Not a problem. Media 201. <laughs> um, covered some basics in, in the session previously. Mm -hmm. Sorry for the monopolization of the, of the conversation, folks. Um, what sort of stuff are, are you looking for? Um, essentially, we're, we're trying to answer questions that you might have about things. How, how are you using social media at this point? Me? Mm -hmm. yeah, anybody. anybody. <laughs> we're, we're looking for conversation. We are friends. Well, I use Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Okay. Um, and it's for a small art stuff. And I Twitter on Beats. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So you're looking to get some more information about, about yeah, that. Yeah. Just what? Um, well, on all of them. What, okay. What, what are the good practices to get to people? Okay. And you indicated. Mm -hmm. So you're trying to learn more about Twitter, or just yeah? I mean, like, I think I'm good with Facebook. Mm -hmm. I use it all the time. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we had a lot of Twitter conversation in the, in the last session. Um, I guess if, if that's what folks are asking about, Any, anything in particular you're looking to? Well, I'm, I have a Facebook page for the podcast and okay. Twitter as well. Trying to figure out how to get people who are following us on Twitter to listen to the show. Uh, okay. Followers, but it's not that many listeners. Gotcha. Um, considering the fact that that's something that we've actually, like in, in my own personal use of, of this things, it is one of the biggest questions of how do I get that information out? How do I get their attention? How do I get people coming in? Uh, do you have any thoughts on this case? <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, well, um, 
why, why do they say this? Or what, what prompted this? And I, I've done it myself again. I will click on that tweet to find out what the back and forth has been, to see if anybody else has been interjecting the conversation, and then I'm sucked in. Especially and if you can get somebody who's interested, like, I, I hate to push this, but Edgar Snyder is, is one of those characters. I'm sorry, I just. <laughs> <laughs> They're retweeting it, and someone's going, Hector Snyder has a Twitter account? This yeah. is awesome. And then they're following it. That's how a lot of our. Yeah. <laughs> like that. Like, oh my gosh, Hector Snyder's Well, I can, I can tell you right now that when you tweet from one of the sessions upstairs, you're like, Hector Snyder's here. And like, the, we had a group of our volunteers sure. go up and like, okay, where is he? We don't see him. Okay. <laughs> Are you sure he's here? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Legit, that happened. Um, but yeah, I think that you guys are doing good job with what you're doing and it is difficult with, with what you're doing. It's not like it's not like you're doing some sort of like awesome podcast that you're you know you're tweeting about is Roy Hong stuff. It's great. I think you're doing a great job with it and hopefully some of the player education gets a little will help. Yeah it's like you Yeah that's that's your goal once you go back and you find out what kind of ice cream you like. Or his favorite what's his favorite Pittsburgh memory? You talk yeah. about a total explosion of awesomeness. Yeah. He, yeah. He, he loves ice skating at the uh, rink. Everybody would just lose their minds. <laughs> he eats brogies for many sandwiches. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know the fun thing is pictures people love. So if you have, like, last night was Light of Night, if you have pictures that you can tweet something out that, hey, you know, we did this. Um, I, I know that Edgar Snyder's Will Auburn's face is, like, all over. You have the billboards. You have this. You have that. You have that. Take his cutout. Put him in like events and just be like Edgar Snyder, you know, with, with, the, with the pointing, yeah. mm -hmm. and then take pictures with it and hashtag it and do it for like local events around the around the city. That's what I think. That's, that's kind of what Even with uh, the other lawyers involved, if you can give them a personality, um, people might go, "Oh, wait a minute." It, it's weird. It's funny. Even with politicians, I'm sure you've noticed that when you see a name that seems familiar, suddenly you trust them. It's like some sort of trust is built. Like if Somebody to you know you pointed that this is Katie out doing uh, Katie at her desk, and then suddenly you're on the website looking for somebody. Oh, Katie, I know this name, I know this person, and then suddenly you have a connection, and then you have that trust. And so, I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be your main character. You can go off of the other people in there and uh, kind of build off of there. And, uh, well, it's that, yeah. you know, we're we're really trying. You'll see for some of these ads that come out that I'm featured partners a lot more. You can see Edgar Snyder and Associates. Yeah. Not just yeah. There's a lot of people who are involved in the cases and job groups who are really yeah. great for you guys to be able to turn. And they don't get a lot of face time in this. We're, I think social media is kind of where you kind of bridge that yeah. you know, to make it not all about one person but just your lifetime together. Yeah. Really. And the other, the other nice thing is you have multiple people involved. Like Katie's saying, give them each like an individualized voice. Um, in a law firm, practice groups. I mean, there's a specific niche practice group. judgments for that it has made like news along the city. Work with that to be that person's voice. You know, people will people will illustrate that attorney being with this type of case or this type of specific event or this specific thing. And it, it'll kind of give a separate voice to that individual while keeping it amongst the, the umbrella of the, the Edgar Snyder and Associates Law Firm. <laughs> we're, we're gonna jump off somehow. <laughs> okay. Um, um, okay. So you guys said you were pretty good with Facebook and personal and professionally. Okay. Um, yeah, we we're here to answer your questions. So if you have questions, this is a really good time. Yes. We, we were just touching a little bit on Instagram uh, in the last session. Um, how familiar are you with Instagram? Familiar? I, I just, I don't know. It's adapted to something. I don't know what exactly is. Okay. I always feel like I'm just like the, the poster child for you can put anything on Instagram. Yes. Yeah. I have a 
very, very, very odd background. I do a bunch of different things. I, I work at the, at the top one. I work at Scare House. <laughs> that's where that crazy picture of the corner. I'm glad that's the first one yeah, that comes up. That's, that's what's over here. <laughs> Me, Scare 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 House. House. Scare House. Um, <laughs> yeah, so it goes everything from that to like smiley face cookies. Mm -hmm. um, That was, that was me. That, the story is that I, I, when Instagram first came out, everybody was posting art and pictures of food. I was all like, oh, Instagram can make anything fancy. Watch me make these porta potty pictures fancy. So I started posting porta potty pictures that I made really fancy with all the filters. Now I get sent a lot of porta potty pictures. Yeah. Which is funny because that's it's amazing how you, not that it's my personal brand, but my personal <laughs> brand is aligned. Porta potty seems pretty much Hello Kitty. Yeah. <laughs> so it's um, Instagram, what, what, my favorite thing about Instagram is, and I talked about this before, was the fact that you can push a picture out to several social media accounts at once, where you can link your um, Twitter, your Facebook, your Tumblr, uh, pretty much anything you want, and you can push one picture and one story across to everything. You don't want to do that all the time, because then if, if I'm posting everything the same across all of my social media platforms, why would you bother following me? give your, your audience a different reason to follow you. I try, there's there's a lot of things I post on Instagram that I don't post to other places. Like I try to like stick with that kind of, so that audience, I kind of give them a reason. They're like, Peter, I'm over here talking about this. I do a lot more personal things with my Instagram. That's what I struggle with. It seems like it's really personal stuff. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, you can't really share stuff on Instagram unless you can, and I don't know this. Mm -hmm. You know, like yeah. Twitter, I'm good with Twitter. Retweeting all that stuff back, mm -hmm. Facebook share, all that, but like Instagram, like, if people like it, to me, I'm like, what am I getting? I don't want to do it for myself. Well, for, for what it's worth, I, <laughs> I, I mentioned this in one of the previous sessions, I have an Instagram account. I am more like an Instagram stalker. I don't post a whole lot to it, but I do check what other people are posting, and I do click, and I follow, and I'm like, this is kind of cool. And to be honest, I follow people on Twitter because of what they have on their Instagram. And it's just another way of getting information out there. Um, but again, something we touched on in the last session was that Instagram is kind of like the Twitter for people who don't read. It's a picture that you can follow the picture. And it, pictures always get attention faster than words do. Keep the pointer there. You can post pictures, you're, you're good to go. Um, so it, it depends, again, on what, what you're using, well, what your industry is. Because obviously there's some things you really can't be posting photos of, like, top secret clearance is going to have to kill you because I, I showed it to you type of stuff. Instagram really isn't going to work for you for that. But if it's something having to do with, um, you know, public interest or, or something like that, that you can take pictures and share it amongst the other social media sites that you have by linking your, your Twitter or your Facebook with your link, with Instagram. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, it's it's something that you can kind of use as a launch pad. Also, Instagram is great for giving your brand personality. It's a way to go behind the scenes of something. If, if you're offering a, a product, this is oh, this is us making these pens. This is so and so. Um, it's a nice way to highlight your employees. You know, it's a nice way of saying, oh, you know what? This is Missy. She put the she puts the caps. Which people like brands and personalities. People like to attach themselves to brands and like, oh, I love this person. So I love like Hello Kitty and Sanrio because you know something I identify with and I like. And but people like brands and people attach onto it and they like when they have a personality to them and they, they feel an attachment to them. And then suddenly it's not just it's not Apple, it's not Nike, it's it's something you really feel passionate about. And that's kind of where you take somebody who's just purchasing things to an actual, you know, taking you just a plain old customer and being someone who's devoted to your brand is just taking that switch over from giving that personality to your brand and then suddenly it's a friend, it's not just your shoes. And the other difference is stylization. Katie can take a picture of one of those pens and I can take a completely different picture of one of those pens and it can, it puts forth two completely different separate ideas and interpretations on that. You know, if Kate looks at the pen and you have a full picture of the pen, that's a nice picture, that's fine. If I take a pen, you know, if, if instead of taking the picture
picture, like, like Katie sends the picture like this, and it's you know full size pen, and you can see somebody's finger holding it, whatever. I turn the pen somewhat sideways, and I kind of zoom from this angle of it. You get kind of a cool stylized picture that people might look and say, "What is that?" And they'll click on whatever to you know look and get more information about it. So again, it's how you do it, how you use it, and you know, are, are people interested enough to, to play? And then that the another this is another place you can play with hashtags mm -hmm. um, and, and really get your brand kind of out there too. The throwback Thursdays are key. I mean, oh. there, everybody has some sort of company started at some point where you're wearing high waisted shorts or in my case a fanny pack and you know colors in that corner there. Nice. That was very <laughs> but by doing things like this, you can, um, you, another way to engage with your audience is in that regard because people love throwing Thursdays, you know, and they might just click on a TBT and just go through their whole Instagram feed and go, oh, that's, that's very interesting. I didn't realize that 20 years ago such and such company started out in, in, in this corner store or some sort of, and it's just, then you're turning into your brand history now and you're telling a story. There's just a lot of different directions that you could take with Instagram. And it's just the same thing. It's, it's figuring out who your audience is, who you're trying to reach, and what you want to get, what both sides want to get out of it, the conversation. The other fun thing about Instagram is they give you the option to uh, use different filters to try to get a different take on, on the image itself. Um, I, I like going through and looking at some of the filter options and seeing, okay, I, I have this picture of Hashtags when people use the hashtag like IG daily or photo of the day. Mm -hmm. Do you think those are um, like the people that like and follow you when you use those hashtags are sticking around, or do you think they're just following you? Like, what hashtags would you say are ones to get substantial followers more than people who are just trying to get you to look back at their feet? That makes sense. I, I think it depends on what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, we're doing obviously podcast test where we've asked everybody mm -hmm. to hashtag photos and everything from the event today, hashtag PTPDH9. Mm -hmm. If you look PTPDH8, you'll get pictures from last year, seven the year before that, mm -hmm. six the year before that. Um, so obviously we've, we've kind of marketed that each year, each number, we have a specific, specific hashtag that people can find a picture from this year's event versus last year's event. Mm -hmm. um, if you're doing it for an event, create a nice hashtag. Mm -hmm. um, last night, meet and greet event at IPEA. And we did PTPGH9 meet and greet as our hashtag. It's a long hashtag, but it separated last night's photos from today's photos, but it still encompassed it within PodCamp 9, so that we can go back and we can look at it and pull from what people have contributed. Mm -hmm. um, so if, if you have a brand, hashtag your brand. You know, that way it's easy to link back to you and, and find. Again, um, looking through my you know, tweets or my Facebook or something and I see a hashtag, if it's something that I'm curious about, I'll click on it. I'll follow that thread and I'll occasionally follow you know, a page or I'll follow an individual because I followed that hashtag, I liked what I was seeing from that hashtag, saw who originated it, and went from there. It's hard to tell like, whenever like the throwback Thursday is just a very, very basic I will hashtag photos on Instagram, especially the most ridiculous hashtags, just to see. Like, I've done white girl problems just to see what random people like it, just because it's a white girl problems hashtag. Just like the ridiculous things that you can put on there. But um, the hashtags, they're, they're great for with campaigns and things with uh, that regard, especially around your business, creating something unique to your business. It's always nice to have a hashtag. Um, mm -hmm. If you're a nonprofit, when you're hitting a point where it's like a big donation season, mm -hmm. or if you have an event coming up, it's, it's nice to have profit to have a hashtag built around your brand so that you can put that out there and like Missy said it's to keep the one is to keep the content together and two to kind of curate more content as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, I'm making a question. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta check one off. <laughs> <laughs> 
trying to um, basically share my my content my portfolio and I've been uh, very successful in uh, Instagram and G plus uh, but I've been having a hard time doing in uh, well Facebook is always hard to do anything pretty much um, mm -hmm. but I've never tried to do anything on Twitter so I've been having a hard time to share my content on Twitter uh, how would you address that kind of issue um, just sharing images with, like I do on Instagram or Facebook, or like on something different? Well, you can do the Instagram integration with Twitter and Facebook. And you know, it shares it across all, all the platforms under the circumstances. Um, I read, create a voice is the easiest way. Um, again, people tend to respond if there's something to respond to. If you're just to kind of say, 
think of even creating conversation. Um, even if it's something of, hey, did a photo shoot this weekend. It was really cool. Check this out, type of thing. You know, people will check it out. You know, comment, hey, that was kind of awesome. You know, type of thing. Uh, you, you can go a little bit further into conversation um, starters to, you know, to ask people what their thoughts are on style of preferences. You know, put it put an option out there. Black and white, or you know, stylized color. People will respond because they'll they'll let you know that they prefer the black and white or stylized color, and then you can get into deeper conversation of you know, check out some of these other things that I'm doing. You know, could, could I try this or something like that? I mean, it's basic conversation starter, but you have to start somewhere with it. And if you don't have a lot of followers on Twitter already, use the followers that you have on Instagram and kind of bridge it over. Would be my suggestion at this point. I would suggest if if you're concentrating on photography and um, posting photos to Twitter, I would post them directly to Twitter and not use Instagram as often because a lot of the different mobile platforms for Twitter, um, if you've ever looked down, if, like if I look down my stream right now, I see pictures. Pick, 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 right. pick, pick, pick. That's done directly through Twitter. But if I'm on, um, a, let's say, a different um, Instagram, for instance, puts in a link. So you don't yeah. see the picture, you can see a link. So yeah, that, that's something else, because you that, you want to catch the people's attention when they're looking through the picture, so you want to see. So, I mean, Instagram is great for posting across, but especially if you're a photographer, it's probably better to post directly to. And the same thing goes for Facebook, yes. posting it directly to Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of these companies, they, they don't pay nice, play nice. They don't want to cross, like, cross post. They want to specifically use those and the whole ad space thing. And yeah, and I've got a hard way to work press. personal and a business, and it just was primarily personal. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, the, the way that Facebook has a lot of stuff set up, I, I know that even with the difference with the podcast stuff, when we've been trying to post stuff to Facebook, it just gets kind of wonky. Mm -hmm. um, we, we have a separate business one that's connected to everything yeah, else. It, it, it makes it Especially difficult. Facebook. Maybe maybe we can do that next year for podcast. Yeah. Okay, we'll we'll spend the next year trying to, to get them to do it and then we'll be like, surprise, look what we did. Oh, wow. <laughs> Hashtag free the photos. There are a few of us. Because, so I know, like, we really invest a lot in Google Plus because it's so great for SEO. Yeah, oh, yeah And we found a lot of followers from, you know, um, just like Zimbabwe and like all these weird countries that end up following us. And it's a very international crowd and it's very topically based. And we have a good, solid community of um, photography or craft beer and all those things. But, you know, do you see a Pittsburgh? We're really just kind of saying, well, I, we just don't have regular success and we really reach out clients here, but we'll be here anyway. Yeah, and, and like you said, I mean, there's, there's a group over here, there's a group over here, there's a group over here. There's, there is no real uniformity that I've noticed with it. Um, my husband, for his uh, video and social media stuff, he does a lot with, with Google+. Um, and I mean, it has its own content. It it's usually when he's posting across other platforms, but the interaction, the biggest thing that he has with it is uh, the Hangouts. So that's like that's like his big thing is, is the Hangouts. They're initiated through the, the plus options in his thing. Um, whether the rest of Pittsburgh will catch on. It's interesting that Google, Google Plus is popular with teenagers because, again, they're, they're not, their parents aren't on it. Nobody's in it. <laughs> And nobody's paying attention to it, so they're just kind of, well, we have this whole world to ourselves. So it'll be interesting to see if they continue to stay on it once, you know, as the years pass. Because I've thought the same thing. I'm like, I 
Suddenly one day I had seventeen thousand. Oh man, it was it was amazing. So now if you, it, the thing that makes me laugh really hard right now is when you go back to overview. I stink. I'm down like ninety seven percent. Maybe I had a nice spike. Yeah. Um, but uh, I'll tell you what, it, it paid off as far as the number that's sending me. You know, it was like twenty or so, which is a big deal for us. It's, it's important for our communication page. Uh, twenty new. A lot of people saw content and we had a lot of interest in content, which was pretty neat. I don't think it was very expensive. Sorry. Did you use a custom list or did you set up demographics for your ads? I think she set up demographics because Heather actually did it. I think she set up specific demographics for the age group. And uh, you can really target, if you, if you didn't know that with Facebook ads, you can really target who specifically sees it. Uh, age group. with influencer campaigns, finding your influencers. That's another option of something you can do to um, increase your reach. Um, each of us, if, well, uh, and you may be familiar with cloud scores, even though there's a whole discussion on whether or not cloud scores mean anything, that's an option as far as figuring out um, who your influencers are. Uh, one thing I like to tell people is it's not the number of followers, it's the number of interactions that the people have. Um, I could be connected to 10,000 people, I get 10,000 followers on any specific social media site, but those 10,000 people never do anything for social media accounts. I can have five followers who each have maybe 5,000 followers a piece, and they're all interacting, they're all spreading messages, and those are the people you want to reach out to. Find people that are passionate about what you're doing and reach out to them, interact with them, talk to them. If they're tweeting you on questions, you know, hey, so-and-so, reach out to them, find a way to get a connection with them. Uh, also find people who are in your, your niche in the city, and especially, uh, that are doing similar things and connect with them. Use those connections and then suddenly you're talking with them and someone might be might be interested. Um, but 
you talk, you connect with another company in town, and it's pretty simple. It's local, anything. I mean, it's any. You don't have to go. Don't go thinking you have to find Beyonce and have Beyonce talk about <laughs> yeah. your your brand in order to succeed. Your influencers can be anybody in your community. And the other fun thing that I find, and myself, I'm kind of old school in this regard. I like a good old face to face. You know, I, I like to be able to meet people that I can with. Like, oh my goodness, I totally have followed you on Twitter for like two years, and I have never met you. That is so cool. We can actually meet, have a conversation. Um, people like to have that like one-on-one -on -one in person acknowledgement. So if there is a tweet up or a meet up of some variety on social things, you know, even it's something as simple as Podcast Pittsburgh, um, make it a point to, if, if there's somebody who has interacted with you online, make it a point to go and meet them if you know that they're going to be a day back type of thing. I mean, not, it's not in a stalker way, but just to, hey, I noticed that you like comment on my show every single week. I think it's awesome. You know, it, it's really cool. What sort of stuff do you like about it? Why, you know, kind of pick their brain without being too obvious about it and, and see what they have to say about some insights to why they follow it. You can identify different directions you need to take your social media in because they might tweet about it. I really wish you would post more of this. Yeah. Okay. I mean, there's nothing better than someone telling you what they want, mm -hmm. it's, especially in social media because it's all so ambiguous. You can do anything in the world. Oh, hey, just tweet about whatever you want. That's like the worst thing anybody can tell you to do. If you're ever working a social media campaign, campaign they just say, just do what you think is best. You just went wrong because it's, you yeah. have to figure out what they are. What are your thoughts on, interesting, I've seen some of the people I follow do this, and I'm just afraid to do it. Okay. Posting the same content, but tagging different people. Because on Twitter, everybody's in my characters, so you can't do it. Again, it depends on what you're doing. I mean, if there's a specific reason that you're reaching out to all of those people, I mean, I, I myself have done that literally like five times in the entire existence that I've done stuff with Twitter. Um, but the times that I did, it was something that I felt was important, and I simply couldn't, under the parameters of the 140 characters, fit everybody in. Um, you know, so I even indicated like continue at the very end of my thing, and then went and pretty much copied it. Continuation, thanks guys, type of thing. Um, in some capacities, myself, I think it's kind of like you. It's, it's, I'm kind of leery of it when I see people do that over and over and over again. But once in a while, we're good with it. I think it's something else important with that is if, if you're thanking somebody, make sure you thank everybody involved that you see. Because that's another thing is, is you always want to say thank you. You always want to point out people that have done things for you. Um, if that makes several different tweets, then several different tweets, but um, that's another thing too. And to be honest, thank you is primarily when I post it in the past. Mm -hmm. um, I, I can tell you right now, following the podcast weekend, there will be a nice little thanks to everyone, but there will also be a thanks to you know our sponsors, thanks to our presenters type of thing. Because I mean, it, it will be posted tweets specifically for thanking anybody that I can think of who, who has put effort into. And guess what they're going to do? Retweet that! Yay! Yeah, and that's, I guess what I'm... Something that's coming in with, oh, yeah. with the specific example. Yeah, no, 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 no. So, like these comedians or whatever that follow or celebrities are mm -hmm. local, but they say show at improv this Saturday at Post Gazette, and then show at improv this Saturday at City Paper. Show up, you know, the same. What are your thoughts on that? See, that's that's, what I was kind of that's where I think that's kind of an option. So. I kind of think of that. Too. Um, yeah, I, I would. Uh, their goal is just to get those outlets to. Yeah, and that's that's exactly why I think it's an option. I, I've done it one time. Yeah. We did a crowdsourcing campaign, and I reached out to 100 people individually because I knew these people would donate to our crowdsourcing campaign. So I gave them the link so that it went to them specifically at the end of the campaign instead of doing it that way. I just direct messaged them. Mm -hmm. But I did it one time so that it got out there. A hundred times you did it that first time? <clears throat> that first time. I was to a hundred different people. Wow. Did you get much backlash from that? No, because at the beginning of it, I did put down, this is what I'm doing, this is why I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. I'm really sorry if it annoys you, but it's important to me. Okay. So, you know, I put the disclaimer out there, but yeah. I only did it one time because I know when I see other people do it, I find it 
so he's lying. Yeah. <laughs> but so the second time when I did it, I just did it as a direct message to the people I wanted to get the contact. That was your hand against the last time. One of the things he said was, like, like I, I could think of 25 people on my Twitter feed that I interact with on a semi daily basis. Mm -hmm. Should I be looking to expand that 25 people then, or just focus on those 25 people? You know, this is 975, or just there for the ride? Well, to put it in your perspective, I don't know how many of you happen to follow my husband. Podcast Wrestle Mania Show. Mm -hmm. They do a weekly podcast talking about wrestling. Um, the guys that he has actively involved with the show that are on with him every Tuesday, he met through social media. They responded when he first started the show. They were contributors to the extent they would send emails, they would send tweets. They interacted. They have now, through the small group of them, have become part of the show. Um, we try to do a, hey, thanks for everything awesome that you've done toward the end of the year for like Christmas. And I bake. So I will bake the guys a little tin of cookies and give them a little Christmas card and say, thank you for being awesome. Uh, now that's different because that's what we do with these guys. They've become friends. They're not just followers, not just you know contributors. They've become friends. And it's all because of nurturing those relationships. same contributors that are sending emails. Uh, we have people who come in and watch the show live and pull it up in the chat room and we have you know, chat conversations going on. It depends on what you're doing, but I would suggest nurturing whatever you can from, from your grassroots type of followers. Right. Because if you stop paying attention to them... Right, well, I'm, I'm going to say stop paying attention to yeah, them, no, but, but try to focus on getting Expanding that, that 25 yeah. to 50, or just focus on those 25 and let them do the work for me, maybe? They become your brand ambassadors, essentially, yeah. is what those, those guys have turned into for you. And depending on, I, I guess it would depend on their reach, would be a question, first of all. If your 25 uh, follow, your, your, your 25 brand ambassadors each have five followers and they don't talk to anybody but you, not saying disclude them. But then you're going to want to change your reach up further to see who else you could bring in and then creating new content and looking for new... I, I would, you must want to look for new people for you to follow as well, and they'll follow mm -hmm. back, and then you'll find new people that way and engage people that way. But um, you, you may just want to look and see you know, what kind of engagement rate they have with other people. And if they're, you know, they've got 50,000 followers, you know, or 5,000 followers, whatever random number that you... 100 followers are active with those 100 followers, then you definitely want to nurture those guys. Those guys are your brand ambassadors. Right. But like I said, if it's, if it's you know, five guys and five followers and they can talk to you, it's not the same kind of reach that you're going to want to look for. You're going to want to reach out to other individuals. Look at your options and again, create conversations to, to interact with those additional people. Uh, find something common that you can, you can discuss and doesn't turn into a one-sided conversation. Right. I mean, if you see somebody, maybe you see somebody who follows you who's really active in your particular community, really into whatever you're doing, and they never interact with you, and they tweet something, make it a point to tweet back, to tweet at them, and ask them, you know, further. Maybe it's an interest. Be like, oh, you know, what? I like comic books too, or something along the lines where they could identify with you, and then you kind of build a relationship that way. Right. That's another way to build. It is uh, about 10 till, so we'll, we'll go ahead and wrap. But if, if you want to, please. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Um, <laughs> if, if you do have any questions, you know, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, Katie, um, at Katie Devers on, on Twitter, and Missy at Rebellious Blog. And we're obviously around the event, so. Let's bring some shirts. Yes, let's bring some shirts.